Hey guys, Dr. Gooden back again with another video about the shoulder. This time, movements of the shoulder joint. How does it move in conjunction with the shoulder girdle? Stay tuned to find out. Okay, here we are looking at the movement of the shoulder girdle and the shoulder joint. Now, this video is, is about the shoulder joint, but we cannot uh, not address movements of the shoulder girdle because these movements happen synergistically. They, they accompany each other. So when you abduct the shoulder, so moving your arm away from the midline, the accompanying movement at the shoulder girdle will be upward rotation. Remember, that would be the inferior angle rotating upward and swinging up to allow the glenoid fossa to reposition and allow your shoulder to get that increased range of motion. Okay, and adduction would be the opposite. As you adduct, you have downward rotation, especially if you're adducting from an abducted position. Now our scapula rotates downward. Flexion um, of the shoulder joint, so forward in the sagittal plane, is accompanied by elevation and upward rotation. So we have upward rotation of the scapula, but also elevation of it at the same time as you go through flexion. And extension would be the opposite. The shoulder extension is accompanied by depression and downward rotation of the shoulder girdle. Internal rotation, so internal or medial rotation, when my humerus from anatomical position, the anterior aspect is now rotating towards the midline, that would be accompanied by protraction or abduction of the scapula, moving around uh, the ribs around the rib cage and away from the spine. External rotation is the opposite of that. We have adduction as we externally rotate. That's why if you've ever been to a physical therapy clinic uh, for some sort of shoulder issue and you're strengthening your internal or external rotators, they are very specific about where to put your scapula during those movements. So if you're doing, if you're doing those band external rotations, but you're in that forward shoulder posture of having your sh shoulder girdle protracted, that's not gonna do you very much good. You need to pull that scapula back into retraction and then do your external rotations. Horizontal abduction. So this is different from normal abduction in that horizontal abduction starts from a flexed position so that your humerus is um, at a right angle to your axial skeleton, or if you're standing up, your humerus is parallel to the ground. Now from here, we abduct away from the midline and that's horizontal abduction. The same movement you would do uh, if you're bench pressing and that uh, bar is coming down to, towards your chest during the eccentric component of the lift, that would be horizontal abduction, or maybe during a push-up as you're lowering yourself towards the, towards the ground. And that's accompanied by retraction of the scapula. As I've said before in a previous video, um, that retraction, let's say you're doing a push-up, that retraction is pulling your scapula together towards the midline where your spine is and allowing your shoulder to stay back and keep it in a better, safer position so that you don't get that shoulder impingement happening. And then horizontal adduction, bringing the humerus back towards the midline, that would be accompanied by protraction. Just like in a push-up, as you push all the way up and you end that push-up with protraction because your humerus is um, horizontally adducting. So those are the movements of the shoulder joint accompanied by the synergistic movements of the shoulder girdle. So paired together, the shoulder joint and shoulder girdle have about 170 to 180 degrees of sh total shoulder abduction. But this can be broken down into the following. About 60 degrees of scapular upward rotation, 25 degrees of scapular elevation, and about 95 degrees of glenohumeral abduction. So when we add all those together, then we get that 180 degrees of total shoulder abduction through the combination of those three movements. Now what we call this is scapula, uh, scapulohumeral rhythm. Okay, it's just kind of a fancy term for saying the, the synergistic movement, I, I know I've said synergistic like eight times in the past <laughs> three videos, the synergistic movement of your scapula and your shoulder joint. Okay, as that scapula moves, due to movement of the shoulder girdle muscles um, in concert with the shoulder joint, it allows for um, fairly stable but highly mobile movement of the shoulder. If you have poor scapulohumeral rhythm, then it means maybe your scapula is stuck or fixed or not moving for some reason or another. Maybe it's weak musculature, maybe it's tight musculature, maybe it's pain, uh, maybe it's something else. But uh, what we're looking for as practitioners within the realm of kinesiology is um, does 
does full range of motion scapular movement accompany full range of motion shoulder joint movement? Generally, the ratio is going to be two to one. For every two degrees of glenohumeral motion, there is one degree of scapular motion, but this can vary between individuals. So here are the actions of the shoulder joint. Abduction, moving the humerus away from the midline as we see up here in the top. And remember that that's accompanied by that scapula rotating upward. As we go through these movements, try to think in your head what the scapula is also doing as the shoulder joint moves. Adduction is moving towards and even across the midline as we see down here, moving across the midline. Flexion, flexion, I always get these confused and um, especially as an undergrad, um, but shoulder flexion is moving forward or anteriorly in the sagittal plane, swinging upwards. And then extension is moving back down and then even past anatomical position. And you can even see here how her, how her scapula is doing that anterior tilt at the end in order to achieve that hyperflexion or that hyperextended position. And then here we have horizontal adduction and abduction. Here's horizontal adduction. Notice she's keeping her elbow at about 90 degrees as she's coming across, but if she straightened her elbow as she horizontally adducted or extended her elbow, that would be the same motion as, say, a push up or a bench press or a punch or something like that. Okay, so that horizontal adduction is up here. And then horizontal abduction away from the midline, um, like the downward portion of a bench press or, or a push up. So next time you go to hug somebody, ask them if you can instead horizontally adduct them with your glenohumeral joint. Okay, an internal and external rotation. This one can be tricky depending on what the elbow joint is doing. Uh, so here you see she's keeping her elbow joint flexed at 90 degrees. So it's really easy to see, oh, okay, external rotation because that distal end is moving uh, away from the body and internal rotation because that distal end is moving towards the body. But if you, let's say you are already in 90 degrees of abduction and now internal and external rotation might look a little bit different. Let's say that you just are at anatomical position. Now internal and external rotation look a little bit different. So we, have, we can't be thrown off by what the distal portion of the limb is doing. We really have to look up here at the actual joint and ask ourselves, are we rotating outward, which is external rotation, or are we rotating inward, which would be internal rotation? Now we also have diagonal abduction, and this is just when abduction and adduction occur in an oblique plane of motion. So there are you know, many different oblique planes of motion, in, I guess infinite, between what we would call true abduction and flexion, or what we would call horizontal adduction and abduction, and uh, normal adduction and abduction. So if it's in an oblique plane, then we call it diagonal abduction and adduction. So the key takeaway from this video about the movement of the shoulder joint um, is a concept of the scapular humeral rhythm and the idea that uh, shoulder joint movement is or should be accompanied by um, shoulder girdle movement. We should see about one degree of scapular movement with every two degrees of shoulder joint movement. The next video we're going to talk about the muscles that move the shoulder joint. Okay, that wraps up the video on movements of the shoulder joint. Head on over to here to learn about the specific muscles that cause those movements. In case you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments below and I would be happy to answer them. Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah.